What time is it? It is 205. All right, so let's see if I can get rid of the, the, the slack curse and try to get us back on track for the rest of the day. Uh, hello, my name is Jason Scott. Um, I am a uh, doctorate of law with uh, two degrees in uh, divinity. I was uh, a professor for a college in the Northeast where I have a large contingency of students. So I just, if there's any problems with what I have in my speech, I just want to say that I'll stake my degree on everything I have to say. <laughs> now this references to a scandal that occurred earlier this year. Uh, when I proposed this talk, the way that the talks work with Nauticon is that you propose them a number of months in advance. And so I had a certain agenda of things that I could talk about. Um, as it is, since I gave my talk last year, which was called The Great Failure of Wikipedia, I have had the opportunity to speak in other locations, colleges. I was flown to London to speak to a bunch of publishers about Wikipedia. And so I've had a lot of chances to be known as a Wikipedia critic. And so the problem with being a critic is that if all you ever hear from a critic is their description of how things are wrong, they end up sounding like a very negative person. And in any case where you're criticizing an endeavor that portrays itself as a volunteer effort, it sounds simply like you're somebody who's not willing on his own to make things better, but only willing to point out where things have gone wrong. I contest this. The reason I contest this is because um, I criticize aspects of Wikipedia within its greater context of the internet. Uh, when uh, I first encountered Wikipedia a number of years ago, I had a number of issues with it and stated so in an essay called The Great Failure of Wikipedia. This brought on uh, a little bit of heat. And it's also a very unusual place to be in for me because I'm known as a person who archives old things. Theoretically, a person like myself who would be dedicated to truth and gaining information would be interested in the largest gaining of information on the internet. Uh, at this point, Wikipedia has actually grown since my speech last year. The, uh, Wikipedia is now certainly in the top 10 uh, websites. Um, it is, thanks to artificial Google Web, the number one hit for pretty much all nouns, pretty much all living people, pretty much all uh, major scientific concepts. They are now to the point that they are the dominant source of information. Now, there's a whole variety of thinking about this to say, well, yes, but at the end of the day, it's just Wikipedia. Now, we just had an experience uh, which has just gone across the wires just a couple uh, weeks ago where a gentleman who was known as an essayist firebrand had written a number of books which had gained some controversy, all well and good. Uh, in the meantime, somebody had vandalized his Wikipedia article uh, to indicate that he was a terrorist, a natural activity. So. This was fine, except that when he was trying to enter into this country on a speaking engagement, he was stopped at the border because they had a, a printed form of Wikipedia entry and confronted him about it. And this caused him some amount of trouble and is now echoed out. And the answer is, of course, it's just Wikipedia, but in fact, it's not. So let's step back a little bit over here. I'm assuming, of course, that everyone here has in some way encountered Wikipedia, because if you haven't, Wikipedia has encountered you. Um, at this point, you are probably gaining information online from people that is being given to you via Wikipedia because they are providing it from Wikipedia. Um, the situation that I had encountered earlier where gaining ground is now to the point that it is the dominant form of gaining information. And in some ways, this is very interesting. In some ways, this is very terrifying. So uh, my original plan in talking about this was to talk about Wikipedia's specific exploits. Now, why would one do that? You go into a debate about why should one discuss what the exploits of something are? What is the meaning of full disclosure and what is the purpose of it? Well, the thing is, is that there's a school of thought that says, no, you should speak with the vendor about something being exploitable and then let the vendor have time to patch the problem. Then there's the other opinion, which is uh, espoused by this bastard named Dan Bernstein, which is that the fact that anyone knows about it indicates that anyone could know about it and therefore everyone should know about it because everyone already does. It's a fascinating way to look at the world um, and it must make him really popular.
or at the DMV. So <laughs> when you approach something, say, with full disclosure, the idea is you say, I've noticed these problems. Now, when I say that about Wikipedia, understand that Wikipedia is a very interesting case study in what people are calling open collaboration. That is to say, from its roots, it was portrayed, OK, not right from its roots, from its secondary roots in 2001, it was portrayed as an utterly open and collaborative organization. Even people running the organization would be collaborative. Even the process of running the management would be collaborative. So if you were able to collaborate by assisting it with its nonprofit status, you could collaborate simply by being somebody willing to step up to the plate. Uh, this doesn't scale. In fact, my theme for Wikipedia is it does not scale. It scales perfectly fine in database entries. In fact, the fact that you can go to one of the top 10 websites and be able to hit a fully dynamically generated web page and have it come back so fast, that is a masterwork of programming. I have no debate about that. I have never said a bad word about the development of the Wikimedia software. In fact, I use it myself. I control four or five wikis that are of a closed nature that only a few people can edit. I find the software absolutely wonderful. I never want anyone to think otherwise. The problem is, is that the software is run by people. And once you add people into the mix, you fall into the foibles of people. So in Wikipedia, initially, there was this multi-layer approach to being an administrator. You eventually had to have somebody with more power than somebody else. And in doing so, there was, therefore, a reward system in how could you possibly get a level up. So when people started getting levels up, Initially, it was a case of there being such a small audience that you could get away with that. In other words, if everyone kind of knew each other and it was less than a couple hundred people, you made several assumptions. And this is important. This is a problem that all collaboration websites tend to have. A collaborative website assumes that all the people in it who are contributing to it and are not overtly destroying it are on their side. And this is a fallacy as your group grows. The more people are in the project, the more you are likely to get sleeper agents, moles, people who, for them, the fun part is acting like they're just into it like you and then waiting for their big moment to really fuck things up. <laughs> this is critical to understand in what's now known as the SJ controversy. The SJ controversy basically arises because there was a gentleman who portrayed himself as a professor with uh, four degrees, two of them a professor with, te with, with students, who, over the course of his uh, two or three years on Wikipedia, gained every level in the game. He became an administrator. He became an arbitration committee member. In other words, he was a person whose job was to arbitrate on the accuracy of others and their willingness to follow the Wikipedia community standards. He eventually got to the point that he achieved level 70. He was able to actually get a working paid job with the Wikimedia Foundation. And this, unfortunately, was his undoing. Because in doing so, he revealed that, in fact, he was not a 30-something professor with doctorates, but he was in fact a 24-year-old layabout from Kentucky who had simply had enough time to work on Wikipedia to do things like that. Uh, and initially, this was just accepted because he had done really good work. He had done a lot of work. And when you do a lot of work, people don't mind that you're not who you say you are as long as you're not being destructive. Now, the problem, or the great wonder of Wikipedia, is that at any given time, if people are told what to look for, they will search through everything to prove their point. So what you had was people went back and looked at his entire multi-thousand editing history, what, what of it was available, and was able to find places where he said, I will stake my degree on this, and say things like, I trust this book. I recommend it to all of my students. Now, initially, there was a uh, kind of a hair, kind of a little kerfuffle from the outside about this SJ situation, which was, oh my god, I can't believe this happened. How could you let that happen? To which the initial response on the 
management of Wikipedia was simply no big deal. Now, why was it no big deal? Because he had done really good work. This is the same thinking that when people find out that their local doctor of their town doesn't have a medical degree, they'll say instead, well, his 20 years of healing us make up for that. And even though he claimed he had a degree and claimed he was a doctor and wasn't and kind of worked his way around and maybe perhaps a few people died because they were undiagnosed, at the end of the day, he did really good work. So, what made people angry about SJ was that he was relying on others' trust network to give him greater and greater power within the process. And part of that was based on who he was. When questioned about this, Jimbo Wales, the uh, co-founder of Wikipedia, said that, well, he did it to protect his privacy, that this was a measure of pseudonymity to protect his identity from the freaks. Now, the problem is, of course, that the freaks are inherent through the entire system. In other words, uh, a collaborative environment encourages a certain personality type. So where am I going with this? Well, the thing is, is that there were several exploits that he used up to and including the occasional referenced sock puppet. Now, what's a sock puppet? A sock puppet within Wikipedia is basically an account that you also run. Having multiple accounts is not any unusual measure in any other situation. It's not unusual to having multiple file folders. I mean, simply if you're doing thousands upon thousands of changes to a process, it sometimes helps to be able to say, well, this character is doing this amount of changes, and this character is focusing on that. But within Wikipedia, there's a vague credential system that exists, uh, completely made up, which in, it basically encourages um, people to stay under one, quote unquote, account, one real account, even if it's a pseudonym, even if it gives no information about you. And again, that doesn't scale. You can't function on a system like that. So in what ways have people exploited Wikipedia? Well, like I said, there have been people who have, it turns out that literally six months later, that all they were doing was they were on there building up a sleeper account to do nothing but to make sure a certain point of view was pushed through an account. Because remember, if something has now become among the top 10 websites and the de facto form of information, there is an enormous amount of pressure to make sure that what is there stays. In this way, uh, one of the exploits of Wikipedia is that persistence wins over quality. If you're able to maintain an account in a fashion that you uh, wish things to run, in other words, have an account that is friendly and nice but constantly tries to keep these minor changes in place, you will eventually win. People walk away, walk away. Um, you'll have people who are willing to deal with facts. That is to say, it's not that hard to say that there were this many presidents of the United States. Perhaps you can debate over whether or not the presidents before George Washington were presidents of the United States, but generally you can say elected president from here to here, this amount. It's very hard to dispute that fact. Attempts to change that are very easily uh, thwarted, brought back, undone. Um, Less easy are ones where you add false information. And by false information, I mean information totally within theme. If you're somebody who comes onto that um, uh, section of Wikipedia and talks about an author and then starts to mention things about the author that nobody else has and references things that aren't accessible on the web, what you will find is that they will stay because people are afraid to go after somebody who appears to be a positive contributor. Because anybody who would be spending that much time on Wikipedia to contribute that much effort and yet still be trying to cause it harm can't possibly exist. Can't possibly exist. There was a vandal whose name was Willie on Wheels. Now the thing to understand about Willie on Wheels, a name I might add that for some comedians will literally cause them to drop their coffee and shake is that he was an unbelievably persistent vandal, a scarily persistent vandal, constantly creating accounts, all of them with the last word on wheels in the account. So he would be willy on wheels, genie on wheels, dog on wheels, whatever, on wheels. The Wikipedians found this was very easily handled. Let's just ban any account that has the word wheels in it. What a simple thing, since this man 
basically a Scooby-Doo character, he'll do nothing but constantly create those accounts. You see, those ki that kind of thinking, there was a Squidward Vandal, a Vandal that in, 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 in just basically put the character Squidward from SpongeBob SquarePants on every um, page that he could find. Well, he linked to the same image, so people wrote bots to look for that image being linked, thinking they had solved the problem. You see, it, when you have a situation where you think this must be some sort of automaton who is doing this kind of work. Now, meanwhile, one could constantly cause all of the admins to be worried about this onslaught. And meanwhile, over here, you're indicating that Helen Keller was not just a communist, but was a bisexual, angry communist who was actually not blind or deaf, and in fact, had a great music career. <laughs> if, you know, Wikipedia's solution to vandals, and remember, there's levels of vandalism. Obvious vandalism is Eric is a fag which is a very simple one, which is the, you know, the term that's generally used, which is you, know, you have an account on George Washington, someone changes it to Eric is a fag. This is very easily demarcated, both by scripts and both by people. You can have a bot that literally goes in and says, gee, this person who has never edited before has just edited an all uppercase entry and removed 45 paragraphs in doing so. <laughs> I'm going to assume that he is a vandal and I'm going to undo with my bot that work. And of course, that bot adds on to the level of the person. So what you end up with there is this over-belief that people could only be working along one set of purposes. Well, how, many, how hard is it to create a sock puppet who does nothing but want to delete articles, wishes to have them removed from Wikipedia, constantly fights to say, this is not relevant to the Wikipedia way. All it does is go on every day and every time there's a vote says, I agree with you, we must cut this place down to the bone. Until every once in a while this account suddenly decides, you know, I say I shouldn't delete these, but you know, this one, this one deserves to stay. The people who have been watching its reputation will say, my God, this delete happy bastard is really into this article. Surely this article must stay. So the person who has been running the express purpose of making sure this one survives gets his way. Is it worth it? I don't know. Is anything worth it? You know, value systems are very odd when you suddenly are finding yourself in one of the top 10 websites in the United States. So um, Wikipedia has, an, uh, has a, a facility called Check User. Check User basically looks at the IP address of various accounts and correlates them. This is their tool to go against vandals. For instance, you log in as a, uh, as a person, and you then log in from another account and log in from another account, but you're all using the same IP address, check user will find your ass out. Similarly, if you try to um, use your account and come in from different areas and then you start vandalizing and so on, it'll track everything back. Um, this only works when you don't use random Wi-Fi hotspots. But even then, Wikipedia has things I, I believe this person is vandalizing. Do they catch people who are not vandals? Yes. Do they catch people who don't know any better and are suddenly finding themselves banned from Wikipedia? Most certainly. Um, do they consider this worthwhile collateral damage? Yes, they do. Because when you get to a certain size, you say, does it matter if we lose a few people? The record was a IP address. Don't ask me why this IP address existed, but it was an IP address that um, over 100,000 machines um, as a proxy. So someone banned it. And so there was a lot of noise. And the question was, can we keep this open? Can we keep this open and still survive? And so this is where you come directly into their open collaborative model. If no one's been noticing, the collaborative model has been slowly shifting over the course of the last two years. For instance, uh, Jimbo Wales is no longer the head of the Wikipedia it is now a woman named Florence Dochard, who has no interest, actually, in everything Jimbo has to say as being as pure as gold. It's um, a big change within that organization. She is saying things like, no, we, we have to ask for more money. We have to make these policy changes. We can't allow people in this way because we can't survive this way. This is causing a kind of um, dichotomy between what's being said in interviews and what's being said on Wikipedia. 
within Wikipedia, it is now basically impossible to do major editing work on a living person. If you do editing work on a person, it is basically considered on the level of handling nuclear waste. If you, you see, the, you have to understand that as a result of this open collaborative model, there are now several subclasses of human beings. Um, if you can breathe, treat it a certain way. The moment you stop breathing, you enter this other subclass, which is more likely to be edited and speculated on. But until you are not breathing, there is now an enormous amount of pressure not to do anything untoward. Perfectly accurate facts have been reported, cases of crimes, cases of old controversies that have been simply deleted and kept deleted and kept deleted out of the permanently because they might lead to legal action. It astounds me sometimes to think about a fact that a group of people, uh, 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 a subculture of hackers and technical people and programmers who would laugh happily into their jolt cola about the fact that they were able to find a local exploit of the man page if you had and access to a machine through its firewall, uh, see absolutely no problem with a environment where anybody can literally come onto any part of it and change it immediately. But the thing is, is that it's not sold that way. It's sold as a case of you can come on and make things better, as opposed to everybody can come on and make things worse. <laughs> That's very critical. Um, I recently goatsed MySpace, and one of the things about that, uh, about um, unwittingly causing 100,000 MySpace users to see Goetze <laughs> was that it occurred to me that people have always focused on the internet and online life as a case of bringing these wonderful things to you and you going out to getting these wonderful things without realizing that it's this two-way street that enables the worst common denominator to send you a shit-hot piping gun of terror. <laughs> It's a very strong violation the first time it happens to you. It's not so strong the 10th time. By the 12th time, you're looking for someone to do it to yourself. <laughs> right. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the 100th time, you're looking for them. You're paying money to get them sent. So, so you know, um, and that's, that's a critical thing with this two-way environment that's on Wikipedia. The thought is that every single edit made by a person that is not an obvious vandalism is, in fact, helpful. That's simply not the case. Um, becoming an administrator on Wikipedia has now become very difficult. Not very uh, much unlike, um, you know, uh, basically running for a, a high political office. Because a value system has been applied to it. And over time, an ad hoc approach to it, adding administrators, has basically led to a case of, you come on, somebody has to come on and request that you become an administrator, to which point you put on your sad top hat and say, I accept my uh, nomination and I will sit here before you. At which point, everybody gets to randomly ask you questions that suck, that may or may not be relevant to what you're doing. And in fact, sometimes it's, they're relevant and sometimes they're not, but it's considered problematic if you do not answer in some fashion to some of these idiotic questions. What's your favorite color? Mountains, four. <laughs> and at that point, people then, quote unquote, reach a consensus, which is actually a vote. And the vote has people say, I am for this person. And what, and what I think is pretty unique in a political voting system, people will vote for or against your nomination and others get to respond to it. Try to imagine voting for any political office and walking outside and having a guy go, why? <laughs> Did you really think it through? In this case, you can have that happen all the time. You have people come on and say, basically, you know, I don't agree with you. And then people say, this person who has voted for has only done 100 edits on Wikipedia and is not somebody we wish to have counted towards. Where'd this value system come from? It's completely made up. It's ad hoc, it's random. It's actually changeable by the day. It's a case of you can have some people who will say, I mean, 
if you think of Wikipedia as being this thing where literally millions of people are connecting to it, yet you can literally have 12 people swayed in one direction or another if they focus their energy. Um, if people don't think there's already paid consultants whose job for different companies is to sit on Wikipedia, act like people, and every once in a while, pipe in every time somebody says this video card sucks, you know, I mean, they're not thinking straight. And, you know, that's one of those awful realities of today. Sony has certainly hired workers literally slave wage workers, whose job is just to be on forums, whose job is to sit there until the next Sony product comes out, whenever it comes out, six or seven months down the line, so that they can jump down the throat of people if they make fun of the Sony product. And they'll just pay that person, you know, whatever, 10, 15 bucks a day, or whatever it is, you know, just a little pittance, just keep on the system, just post a few things, and when you get a chance, activate you, and you will have to do this. This is the kind of exploits. You know, none of these are technical exploits. It's very hard to crash Wikipedia. It is possible. For a short period of time, their macro language was the attraction of something awful users who took a strong look at it and realized, wow, it has elements of recursion. It has elements of um, uh, a good example, a good exploit that was uh, also of use to some of you is the fact that being happy and global, Wikipedia uh, brought in Unicode. And Unicode is great. Unicode is like having one of those plugs that can go in any plug anywhere. And you're basically trying to push this porcupine-like ball of things into the right particular socket of wherever you are. And meanwhile, it's crazy. Well, Unicode lets you have characters from all over the world. Well, it turns out that there's a Cyrillic character in Russian language that looks like an A. And that's critical because somebody named Jimbo Wales with that A came on and had a fantastic three days on Wikipedia <laughs> before somebody figured out what was going on. And that was a perfectly great day. And I wonder how many of these other places that just, you know, drop in the Unicode, uh, you know, segment are even thinking that um, so, all right. <laughs> do I see things positive in Wikipedia as a critic, as a person? Yes, I do. Obviously, I think it is fantastic for knowing exactly when someone died. Um, it's very good at information that happened immediately because there is a meritocracy to immediately report something. If you're the first, first poster who's able to tell that Jack Valenti died, then you win. Barn star, you win. So that it tends to be good for. It's also really excellent for episode lists and lists of um, fan work, which is in some ways one you know people want that gone. But the fact is, it's very good for that because it's very hard to contest basic lists and facts. It is much harder to say that somebody was influential, or that somebody was not influential, or that they loved somebody or that they cared about this more than that and it was reflected in this song. That stuff kind of gets lost, even if it's based on something. So there's several um, tools and several um, processes that are now in place in Wikipedia that are being used to control information that comes through it. And this is very useful for you in later times. Uh, the first one is one that's called trolling. Trolling is a very interesting concept. In trolling, you are a subhuman creature attempting to destroy everything that is holy and good about here. Anybody who supports you is obviously also a troll. So it's an effective way during an argument to say simply, you who are bringing up points of debate, concepts and theories, you are a troll. Done. And what ends up happening is that other people say, well, I don't want to feed the troll. I don't want to do that. And it's kind of interesting to watch that technique now used to squash various discussions. You know, uh, uh, you know there's, there's a healthy debate and then there's an unhealthy debate, and where do you go to the point that it becomes a Hatfield-McCoy feud? Um, for Wikipedia, it's now about six hours. So when you want to do, the, when you want to squash them and trolling doesn't seem to work, an excellent one right now seems to be the use of the phrase original research. Now, this is interesting too, because Wikipedia 
and that is to say it's got its six pillars of Wikipedia. We will have a neutral point of view. We, um, we, we will smile when we're on camera. But you know, they'll, they'll have these six pillars. Then they have guidelines. And then they have essays. Now bear in mind that there's no ratification process for any of this. You simply say, I believe that this should be a policy. Uh, uh, WP beans, don't stick beans in your nose, which means don't suggest things that will cause other people to want to do them. So if you put in something on Wikipedia that says, geez, this reminds me of that time that somebody sat back and waited till the end of the discussion and then did this, that's called sticking beans in your nose. WP snow is the heinous belief that if enough people at the beginning of a debate sway in a certain direction, it is no longer kosher to discuss this situation because it is obvious what the outcome will be. That's just simply a guideline, but it's treated as a policy, as a pillar. In fact, the pillar, the policy, the essays, are all open to editing. And if you go to them, you'll find that they're still able to be edited, which means you could be following the rule to a T, except that's last week's rule. This leads to something which I call information fashion in a collaborative environment. In an information fashion or information fad, certain ways of looking at information are presented so that people say, that's really cool. It's really cool that you can always refer to this person by their degrees. It's really kind of neat. You say, well, this person, this doctorate. So you say, well, this guy's a doctorate. This guy's a, a, a master's. And then other people come along and say, but that's not everything they did. What about this other person who doesn't have a degree? And then people say, well, no, that's not what we're into right now. It sounds kind of odd and unusual, but it's certainly been the case. There have been cases where there have been rashes through Wikipedia. There was a reading of Wikipedia. And this is an interesting belief, too. Uh, Wikipedia is now abutting against reality. And by reality, I mean 2257 modeling requirements and um, the, uh, the ISP safe clause, both of which apply to it. Uh, in the case of the safe clause, not at all, but it does apply to it. Uh, the ISP safe clause says that if you're an ISP, the fact that this massive amount of porn is going through you is not your problem because you are a service. You're not negotiating through. This is why phone companies don't get prosecuted every time someone commits a crime by calling somebody in a bomb threat. It's a safe harbor protection. Wikipedia claims it has it. That is bullshit. Uh, you can't edit Wikipedia and have control over your content and tell people what to do, and jump in on things, and then go, oh no, but we actually don't know anything that's going on here. Um, that's going to screw them. Uh, it's a matter of when, and it's a case of since any person can violate it by simply stepping on immediately, they've been kind of portraying this fiction. The other one is 2257 modeling requirements, which is this uh, case where Tracy Lords, um, Nora Kuzma, was uh, posing and acting in pornography when she wasn't of legal age. The solution in this country was to um, create modeling requirements so that there was a way to always know what the age was of anybody acting in any adult uh, entertainment. So that when you see that long, boring, boner-killing paragraph in the beginning of a <laughs> pornography thing, that is in fact uh, the, the legacy of Tracy Lords. It basically says, hello, cops, if you need to, just go to this address, and we got her license and her information right here, 2257. Well, Wikipedia puts up adult images all the time. In fact, they, there's, a, there's a pride among people to say, well, look, we are so advanced, we can have these things. But the fact is, is that they're a corporation that has these rules lying over it. So that's uh, a case of reality coming in. And, and that's an interesting thing because people, as we move on in life, more and more rules start to apply to endeavors. So you say, well, I remember 10 years ago, we could do everything. And the answer is yes, because nobody was paying attention to your endeavor. But the minute that people pay attention to your endeavor, you are immediately followed by politics and immediately followed by law, possibly followed by finance. And that leads to these kind of troubles. Something to keep in mind if you work in whatever comes after Wikipedia or work in things that are also going on in Wikipedia. Very important to keep in mind when I say, I, I don't think of Wikipedia as a done deal, but I think that the Wikipedia of 2008 and 2009 will not be the Wikipedia that we think of it. I always get in trouble with my predictions because what ends up happening is that it kind of slides to the right and it ends up being ineffective, what I said, but it doesn't do it the way I thought it would. Like, I was sure that it was going to separate out 
Wikipedia user pages from Wikipedia, because it was such a pain. What they did instead was apply unbelievably draconian measures on random swaths of users until eventually many were driven into different areas of blandness so as not to do it. And there was a great, a great pogrom, and all things were bad, and night of broken glass. And so that was a different way of approaching it. You know, I wouldn't have gone about it that way, but that's, that's what it actually effectively worked out to. Same thing with the biographies of living people. As the living people are going, holy this thing is making stuff up about me. And on Wikipedia, there was a belief that you cannot edit your own autobiography because you are biased and will put up things that can't be backed up. Unfortunately, this has morphed to believe that you cannot correct errors about yourself either. That counts as editing. You know, if you're like, I really only have one head. <laughs> well, you know, big problem for you. Don't take it on the talk page. Um, so, um, I continued to study Wikipedia, not with the fervor or the, the, the manic eye of a, of a lost soul staring into my worst nemesis, but I occasionally browse it. And I certainly watch my own Wikipedia page. Um, I hope people are making up for last year. Last year my Wikipedia page was vandalized 12 times. I was really disappointed in you all. I was hoping to be like 50. But okay, anyway, so um, you have to. You have to sit there and you have to watch things. Now, Wikipedia has made up for this in some way. There's RSS feeds for various articles, so you can watch the progress of an article as it becomes more shitty. And so, <laughs> you know, there's that advantage that you can immediately see the changes. But it's actually fascinating to watch. Now, um, I conducted an experiment on Wikipedia. Now, that's always the first five words to getting banned. But I'll mention it anyway. Because what the heck. Um, one day, I met a uh, character, he was in my mind at the time, who decided to log onto Wikipedia and post pictures. Pictures he had taken, I might add. He had been generating content. Nothing he has done has ever been deleted off of Wikipedia. He has constantly sent pictures up to Wikipedia with really horrible names really inappropriate places. But what fascinated me about this little experiment, because it was just a little experiment, none of the stuff was inaccurate. It was, it was, it was what it said it was. But were people paying, to the, paying attention to what the metadata said? You know, if, 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 a, if, a, if a gas company has a uh, horrible slogan in their web page, does it stay? And the answer is yes. You know, can, can, you, can you name something way too many characters? Yes. Can you call it something horribly inappropriate and still have it get posted on a page about a children's toy? Yes, you can. Because it was a case of the content was king. As long as you were donating, and it wasn't obviously destructive, just kind of weird, this was acceptable. I will disclaim this by saying that I'm claiming that I am lying. I totally made that up. The um, interesting situation that I'll bring up along that line is what I call the teddy bear incident. It's fascinating. Obviously, Wikipedia had problems portraying pornography. Uh, some people didn't like it, and some people are proud of the fact that it has pornography. Well, the solution was, well, why don't we just draw the pornography? If we draw people fucking, that's not really fucking. <laughs> so there was one done for the missionary position. And there was a guy who was doing these drawings. He's, he's wonderful, because he puts things in the drawings. And one of the things he did was he put the missionary position, and there was a teddy bear next to them. And this was a big deal, because why was a teddy bear there? Now, bear in mind, he had, you know, Harry Potter books in one, he had, like, you know, Learning C in one, he had Tux watching a couple copulate in one. You know, he was, he, this was the man's style, but something about that teddy bear, that pissed people off. Well, it turns out in Wikipedia, you can actually download an image, modify image as if it was an article and upload it again. So the teddy bear has come and gone about 70 times. <laughs> the pro-teddy bear contingent says, what the heck? It shows a fun-loving couple having missionary sex. The anti-teddy bear cabal claims that it is an indication of direct pedophilia in this black and white image. She is obviously under 16 <laughs> if she has a teddy bear. 
debate has raged for at least two and a half years. <laughs> and this is a critical, critical debate because A, they're all fucking loons, but B, <laughs> you have this case of people are, um, people are getting wrapped up in the procedure more than the content. In other words, it's less about whether or not this thing should have a picture and whether or not it's drawn and whatever it is, but it's really about, I see a way to change Wikipedia in a, in a direction I wish to have. And another person says, I wish to change it in this direction. And both are getting accolades and points for working on Wikipedia, yet they are both perfectly balanced and actually producing nothing. And you can have that happen when the more you deal with open collaborative environments. Certainly anyone here who has had a small forum or something has had the asshole show up. And the asshole's very interesting. You have, you have the asshole who shows up and just causes trouble. But you have the asshole who shows up and he's very intelligent. But in between his paragraphs, he really insults the hell out of you and keeps doing it and won't go away. And the thing that's really important to you as a person who's running is, go, I don't want this person here anymore. But he hasn't broken any rules. So you have two solutions to that, three solutions. Third solution is ignore it. That doesn't work on the internet. Second one is just get rid of him. Make up your own rule. And the third one is to quietly put in further and further policies until you have become an environment in which he is not allowed to exist. Very effective way of doing it. Um, and this is what happens on Wikipedia, but try to imagine everybody's changing all the rules all the time to make sure things couldn't exist. This led to the cookie monster. There was a concern about the fact that Wikipedia was holding to spam. Imagine that. Wikipedia is very much uh, held up with spam. They have a huge spam block list. They block for keywords. They block for IP addresses, IP ranges, just trying to stop spam. Well, eventually it was declared that if an article was started or was about a subject that handled an obvious commercial enterprise, it should be deleted. Without really any debate, it should be deleted for the good. An idiot took this to mean anything involving commercial products is spam. <laughs> 75 articles about cookie companies later with Hydrox and Nutter Butter and Nestle and Mrs. Fields all deleted off of Wikipedia as he went on following his crusade. <laughs> Eventually, you know, a day or two later, a group of people went, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> to which he went, if you can't read this right, if you can't read this the way that I read it, there's something wrong with you. To which they said, no, there's something wrong with you. And they brought it all back, except for five articles that never came back. Perfectly fine articles, but they're just gone now, gone forever. Um, not to end on a bummer. Um, I'm running out of time here. I encourage people to read my previous essays on Wikipedia, The Great Failure of Wikipedia, uh, Swastikopedia, which is not what you think it is. Um, I gave a talk called Mythopedia. You see a theme? Um, you know, and why do I give these talks? I give these talks like anybody should give talks about anything that interests them. The only way to encourage people to change is not to run headlong in, join the fray, put on your cap, and be another singer in the cult, and think that, oh, this way I'll become the head cult master, and then I'll change things. It's much easier and much more effective to put out your fully formed, non-collaborated idea, and then let others comment on it. Because otherwise, nobody's really commenting on anything. Everybody is everybody else's pal or enemy or friend, and it's all one big gray goulash. And I'm worried that that's the future we're headed for. I'm going to end on that note, because that's even more negative. <laughs> I thank all of you for the time you've given me today. I'll gladly answer questions about this, although I would really prefer to talk about demos. We'll do this out in the hallway, because otherwise I'll be punched. <laughs> I believe we have ourselves another talk coming up. What time is it now? What time we got? Oh, come on. What? 10-2. Ten two. Ten two. All right, I'll take two questions. Go ahead, very quickly. Yes, uh, Nick. 
this is kind of two part question. One, do you think that these same phenomena are occurring more or less identically in the other languages uh, that are participating in the Wikipedia period? And two, do you think that Wikipedia's uh, accumulation of content in other languages is giving it a false credit sense, a false credibility? I think that each of the different um, languages, by dint of being different languages, their own approaches to community. I have been approached by people who are, say, I think in the Polish Wikipedia, there's a big thing of like, they don't do, you know, they're mean and stuff. There's one in the uh, Japanese Wikipedia. It's very critical. Does not allow people to talk about any person. It's very, very much a case. In, in, in um, Japan, you can't mention people in the press and stuff unless they are specifically, you know, politicians and so on. So there's things that cause different things that we don't have to deal with. In the German Wikipedia, they've already moved to the inevitable beta release program, which Wikipedia will eventually move to, is my prediction, which is, guess what? The article you're editing is not the article that immediately goes up to the world. Problem is it kills energy. They don't want to kill, now that they might want to kill energy now, you work it on this, maybe once an hour you make the change. But what that will do is that will actually remove 90% of what I find wrong with Wikipedia because it'll immediately kill that urge, right? You, you automatically go in there. Well, Germany already did it. Germany's already got a beta release program in, 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 in uh, place. They are very specific about not naming living people in certain ways. So I think part of it with the other ones is also they're small. A classic example is the simple English Wikipedia, a misguided attempt to create a version of Wikipedia for people who couldn't read very well. It didn't get much traction, so when somebody wrote that George Bush killed somebody, it stayed there for six months because so few people were paying attention to it. So it, it, didn't, have that, um, it didn't have that necessary slave race that Wikipedia has to have to be able to keep things constantly up and going and constantly quality checking. So, so I think there's actually more case of they are all along the same eventual evolutionary path. I just debate whether or not, say, the Romanian Wikipedia will ever get past a certain point and not a chummy group of Romanians. But it, they'll still maintain that balance. I mean, I don't know Romania all that well. We only slept together twice. But they, <laughs> if they have a political bias that says, well, you know, like, for instance, the rape of Nan King in Japan is, you know, you can't really get, you know, so how, I'd love to see how that article's handled on the Japanese Wikipedia. You know, you have that kind of a deal with this cultural. So that's my, that's my, th that's my principle thought about it, but again, not speaking those languages. I'm an ass. Hmm? I mean, don't we empower Wikipedia to be shitty? I mean, nothing has any power unless we give it power. We, we think that Wikipedia is more reputable than asking some homeless man on the street a question. So isn't it kind of our fault? I think it's more like, I think it's more like, um, you know, they were trying to figure out, there's different theories as to why we all became so fat. And one of the reasons that was finally decided that was a pretty good one was there's an awful lot of cheap, tasty food out now where there wasn't. Sounds like a pithy statement, but it's very true. There wasn't a lot of cheap, tasty food constantly everywhere. We're to the point there might as well be McDonald's in bins for free on the corners. And the thing is, is that when that happens, we're all just going to friggin' blow it up because we have that, right? Well, with Wikipedia, it's like, well, here's an ener enormous amount of information constantly coming at you for free and can be used in any way you want to so it can go everywhere. So it's literally a case of just cheap. T so, it's, it's, so part of it is we, but I think part of it is just exploiting a piece of human humanity that just says, geez, you know, when the first caveman figured out he could, like, get this fire half, half off. And anyway. Yes, sir. Hmm? I think, I, think, I, think, uh, I think the phrase, do you believe Googles, was just funny on its own. <laughs> do you believe Googles? <laughs> the Googles. Um, I think that there's a temporary thing with that. I think that there's a situation where Google is causing artificial weighting in certain directions. All Google has to do at this point, because it currently has a critical mass, is unintentionally... A I mean, the reason everyone uses a piece of shit like front page is simply because Microsoft took one of many companies that were working on remote editable web page software and said, we're going to work with this one. And they took it. And its foibles, its approach, its weird file extension is all an extension of a very large monopoly or large 
uh, dominant organization making a choice. Wikipedia's choice um, for, by Google um, is definitely a contributing factor to this. Um, but I think, it's, uh, I think it's, it's indicative of a lot of it. Like a, the, 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 the Trillion um, uh, talking client, the default is when you talk to people, it will underline words. And when you click on them, you'll get the Wikipedia description of what it was. Whatever that be. Uh, Answers.com uses Wikipedia, pays it for it, pays Wikipedia for the use of it, and keeps, I think, four to five weeks behind Wikipedia. So if there's something wrong on Wikipedia four weeks ago, it'll still be on answers.com. It'll still be on um, reference, I think. References re might be reference. And of course, there's spam sites that simply take Wikipedia articles, change every word to um, their company name, and then put it up. Very effective. Anyway. All right, I think one more. Yes? What do you think about the other I'm bothered by the fact that any time anybody else comes up with anything that's like Wikipedia, they are immediately shot down and called bastards. It really bothers me. It's like having one car company and be, someone else comes along and wants to come up with a car, and someone goes, how can you even imagine to come up with a car? And your car has five wheels. Nobody does five wheels. And the guy goes, yes, that's why I'm doing five wheels. Well, Conservapedia is just another polemic site that's going to have collaborative editing, its own biases, and it's whoop fucking we. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, great. You know, basically, a wiki is a BBS where everyone gets to fuck with everybody else. <laughs> it's a forum where the guy you're fighting with gets to change what you said. <laughs> and so, people who are content with that will put up stuff. Conservapedia, Citizendium, um, there's wiki, there's all, there's all these little abortion wikis that are like, you know, basically um, all the stuff that's run by wiki, uh, you know, like let's just have one on this. And, and I've come up against some of them, um, you know, and some of them are run very poorly and some of them are kind of cute in their own way. There's one called the IF wiki that I found in accordance with a documentary I'm working on. And it is run by, hi, I love you too. Um, yeah, I know, got to get out of here. All right, so anyway, ifwiki.org is a good example to me that is run extremely well because they stick to the facts, they stick to the information, and they work together to make everything better. So there are positive aspects of this. All right, we gotta go. Thank you very much for your time.